the vast majority of anime that come out are adaptations of manga, which can lead to exciting times for fans of the source material. Some adaptations are incredible, and some are less than stellar. The reception of Diamond is Unbreakable has been largely positive, but there have still been some criticisms from the community, more so than I've seen for any of the previous seasons. So, are these complaints warranted? Let's find out by looking at how David Productions handled the fourth part of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. We might as well start off with the biggie, art and animation. The show has some really nice Sakuga moments as you'd expect during important scenes, and even during some relatively uninspiring ones, taking you by surprise and helping to ramp up the intensity. Outside of these key moments, there is generally a lot of movement which helps to dispel some claims of Jojo being a glorified slideshow, which may be in part due to the new simplified art style. The art style is less detailed than previous seasons, but on the flip side allows for greater expressions from the cast, which is very fitting for Part 4's less serious episodes for the most part. However, I think David Productions took advantage of the lesser detail a bit too much, as some characters can look pretty off when out of frame, and even when they are the central focus. This comes to David Productions' biggest problem in animating this part, as it seems like time constraints may have negatively affected the show. Instead of having two seasons for Diamond is Unbreakable like Stardust Crusaders, all 39 episodes aired consecutively, one week after another. For the most part, the episodes are of a high quality, and the poorly detailed characters are minor gripes, but it seems like the studio just didn't have enough time to animate each episode to the best of their their ability. I think the show could have benefited from, say, a 3 month break between episodes 24 and 25 to allow them to refine upcoming episodes. The main reason I'm making a point of these time constraints is because when David Productions seem to run out of time, they outsource an episode to a Korean studio, and holy shit do they do a horrible job. Outsourcing to a Korean studio usually means you can get the episode animated for a cheap price, and it definitely shows in the episodes they are most involved in. One of the most apparent examples is the first episode of the Yoshikage Kira One Still Live Quietly arc, but in fairness to David Productions, the second episode was one of the most gorgeous parts of the entire show, more than making up for it. I'm quite glad the art and animation problems seem to come from time constraints, as we can see that the staff at the studio are extremely talented. In fact, this season has probably been their best yet in virtually every other aspect. The direction of the episodes in particular were excellent, with some amazing transitions that cleverly make use of the elements in the shot in a similar way to Edgar Wright's work. There is also some really nice compositional techniques that play throughout, and are subtle ways to increase your enjoyment of the show, whether you notice them or not. From a sheer manga to anime perspective, there were also great improvements made. One of the biggest problems in my eyes with Stardust Crusaders was the studio's insistence of having only one arc in an episode at a time. This meant that many of the arcs dragged on for far too long, with the most glaring example being the Sun arc, which despite being only two chapters, took up an entire episode. There was nothing wrong with being faithful to the source material, and ultimately Stardust Crusaders adapts essentially every single panel, but at the end of the day we're watching an anime and not reading a manga, so adjustments should be made to fit this. Part 4, on the other hand, adapted arcs in a way that kept the original intensity of the manga intact through far better pacing, and if panels were cut out, they mostly didn't take away from the scene in any major way. For comparison, Whole Horse and Boingo were two episodes in the Stardust Crusaders anime that covered four chapters. Let's Go Eat Italian Food was an arc that covered four chapters from the manga and was one episode, being regarded as a highlight of the show. If the previous method of thinking was present when adapting this arc, it probably would have been ruined. Finally, the music in this part is the best in the series. Many of the characters get their own themes, which is perfect for a show with as many antagonists as Jojo does, as it helps them to stand out. Everyone's aware of Kira's theme, but in my opinion his isn't even close to being the best. Many characters have themes that expertly blend in key elements of their character or stand into the music, such as Highway Star's footsteps being present in New Year's theme. Unfortunately, barely any of these tracks are used or even heard, so I encourage you to look them up as they're sublime. Overall, David Productions have learnt a lot since making part 3, and time constraints aside, did an excellent job. Roll on part 5. 